Actually, New Zealand, like, what an amazing history. And I think the teachers have a, it's our, our role, and certainly in 2022, it'll be even more important that, that we let these kids know about this, this history. It's amazing. Hi, I'm Nick Baker from Fox and Beach School, and my inquiry question this year was, how can I engage the diverse learners in my class using a range of digital technology in the history curriculum? My hunch, my idea as to why I wanted to have an inquiry based on engagement around history is because in previous years, Anzac Day and Treaty of Waitangi, some of the kids don't retain some of the key information that is the basis of the learning. I was concerned that once this new history curriculum is unveiled in 2022, there may be uh, topics that are going to be even less interesting for the kids unless I can present it in a way that engages them. Having completed some recent dyslexia PLD, some of that su suggested that our learners will engage more in what's presented to them if it's done in, with a multi-sensory approach. The world's biggest superpower are about to take aim at one of the most sophisticated military installations they've ever tackled. All right, we're going to learn about the Battle of Rural Pika Pika, and they're like, "Rural what?" But by the end of it, you know, they could speak to yeah. The reason it was called the Bat's Nest was you know, native New Zealand bat crawls around and it's in a dark place and the Māori created trenches and they hid in them to avoid the bombing and really powerful moment in class where together as a group had examples of why New Zealand history is some of the most riveting and visceral and sort of impactful uh, of any history that, that you could learn. Yeah, really memorable I thought. We were interested in kororareka and about hono, honehiki and just how he cut the flagpole down so many times and just what happened then. Yeah. Click on an icon and it ch comes up with like, so churches spared like we said, Heke told the British troops to not loot the, loot the two churches. Yeah, we had to make a presentation like Adi said, we used Google Talk Creator which was really helpful because you could use 360 images to see what you were doing. This is 360 image so you can go right around and see all in here and all around. Yeah, this is the biggest port in New Zealand. In 1830, it was just home to many whalers. So we chose to do the history of Kapiti Island, and it, and we chose to do it just because it was so close to us, and like you can see it from our beach. I think it was a really good way of learning because then we could like to help other people learn as well. Like we put the green screen on the wall, and then we added images to the iPad that we would put as the green screen. I thought that it was way easier because with digital you get to look at videos and pictures which can explain a lot more than words can and I find when you're reading just a long boring book you can sort of just forget things like dates and all that and it just can get a bit boring. And you like you remember it more because you've heard it rather than read it. So we have one-to-one -one devices, Chromebooks in our class, and we've had the use of them for over the last five to six years. So I knew my kids had the skills to create a presentation that they would learn from, and then my thinking was, could that presentation then be used to engage other learners in the class? We showed half of the class our work. They picked a subject out of all of the subjects that we had and then they had to do an assignment on it. So we have our website intersections. One's tangata, the people, whenua, like the land and stories. So it's like, it's kind of, when you're a student and you can, you're not really teaching them, you're more like just helping them out. So before I knew it, it wasn't me trying to teach historical content to 30 kids. It was me providing some information that was engaging using a selection of kids uh, digital skills already and then getting them to provide that information and learning for the other 20 odd kids. So uh, it was quite a successful vehicle for that whole Tuakana Tana idea and it was that sort of uh, energy that they had for their own presentation that the other kids fed off. Something that I learned that was really cool was there's 1200 little spotted kiwis on the island but when they brought them they only brought five so they must have bred that amount which is pretty cool. I thought the harukiki was really amazing. Like, I knew it was very important and the clothes and everything, they made it for clothes, but I didn't realise that the berries, they could use them, they, could, they used it for bandages, 
they used it to heal wounds and everything. Rather than focus on the dates and some of the figures that are important, it's the stories that are most memorable. Hunehike also used alcohols, so it was a distraction against the British peoples. In the Pākehā, they first came to Foxton because there was an earthquake in 1855. And so they moved down here and William Fox was the guy that named here. It was initially called Fox Town. Yep. It was a Māori name, but they, the Pākehā changed it because they're Pākehā, so they got a note, they can't say Māori properly. And it did, did take a bit of time, but there are so many resources out there online, all free, um, that we could engage in. When you combine that with New Zealand's history, um, there's no way you can't be engaged in, in the learning. I think I've used the word engage too much. Sorry about that. You can just edit that out. Never say anything stupid at the end because you'll put it in. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs>